that muddy water is shimmering on their skin. It is beautiful to see. And those individuals out in the dam drinking, they've obviously disturbed those catfish that we were, we were viewing earlier, but... folks when we park in the sun so you can understand why these ellies are really enjoying their mud bath so much because it is hot out here she's gone back to that same itch that she had earlier out of here which is quite interesting to witness this whole event unfold, this whole process of them starting off with the mud wallowing and then gradually moving on to this little wallow here. I'm not sure exactly what she was doing, but she certainly was intent on getting some of the liquid out of that hole. It could be minerals, like I said, because it certainly wasn't fresh water that was coming out of there, no fresher than this. And then now they're moving on to the third and final part of the experience. I'm just wanting to try and get directly opposite where all of them are drinking. It should be a beautiful view for us. Turtle dove singing its heart out in the background. And interesting questions just come through from Mark asking whether a snake can take down an elephant with one bite. Now, I would firstly like to say that the skin on an elephant is very thick. So even if a snake were to bite an elephant, I'm not convinced that its fangs would penetrate deep enough into the skin for its venom to get into the blood system. If it did, however, it would need to, um, it would need to have injected a lot of venom into the elephant in order for it to have any effect because they're such big animals. Um, so the chances of an elephant being killed by a snake are very small, even the most venomous snakes, and we do have some highly venomous snakes in this area. Um, but possibly a baby elephant with thin, softer skin would potentially run into trouble with a snake bite, but I would find it unlikely that a snake would be able to kill an elephant. It is always interesting to wonder though what could happen and what has happened because there is so much unknown in nature. So, especially with these kind of scenarios, it could well have happened like I say. Oh, well, now it appears that another herd or potentially a small part of this herd that we have just viewed, but there is another herd of elephants on the way, so we are going to get ourselves back into position for round two, potentially, with 
elephants and drinking. Um, they do seem to potentially be passing by, they're not heading towards the water, but we'll give it a moment or two. But a lot of strange things do happen in nature, Mark, and obviously there's random less likely events that do happen that are not the norm but they still obviously happen and then there are events that happen more frequently and you could kind of expect to see on a more common basis um a snake killing an elephant would be one of those random outliers that you would not likely witness or, or experience in a lifetime in the wilderness So it's interesting, these elephants, which are, should be coming into view now, are passing very close by to the dam. But obviously they are planning on having a, a later drink stop. Because I'm fairly sure that they know that there's water here. They could well have potentially heard the other herd of elephant through that infrasonic communication that we spoke about earlier this morning. So maybe there's a lack of requirement to drink or a lack of interest to see that other herd of elephants. Different friendship circles, potentially. Joe McDowell on Twitter, good morning. And welcome. Joe's asked whether there are any natural predators of elephants. The answer to that is yes, there are. There's been footage of lions hunting elephants in certain places in Botswana. And I'm sure it's happened elsewhere throughout Africa. But it's a very unique scenario that. And you need a lot of lions, pl prides of 20 plus lions in order to take down an elephant and create the urge to hunt such big prey. It comes with a big pride of lion, so 20 or plus lion is, is not common to see as a starting point, but if you do see them, um, they, they can potentially hunt elephants. And I have seen a photograph of a crocodile holding on as tight as it can to an elephant's trunk with the elephants kind of pulling the crocodile out of the water as it clamped onto its trunk. I think that crocodile was just taking a chance, but a big crocodile could easily take down a baby elephant. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's happened a handful of times. I haven't seen footage of it, and I'm not sure if it has been documented. But if I could put money down on it happening, I probably would, because you get some monstrous crocodiles that could easily take down an elephant. But yeah, a lion and, and a crocodile would be your only two likely predators to take down an elephant, and it, it doesn't happen often. Where it does happen, it's, it's fairly frequent in a certain place in Botswana. There's an incredible documentary on these lions hunting the elephants, and it's, it's in a very emotional and quite obviously sad to witness because it's it's not easy for the lion to kill the elephant quickly so it's not the most humane death um but it happens and that is nature on something a little bit more light-hearted than elephants being attacked by lions we have a woolly necked stork which has come and perched itself in a dead knob thorn tree here at trials dam and I'm sure it'll fly down once it's checked that the coast is clear and feed on some amphibious aquatic beings that lurk in the shallows. Books that you find throughout the world. You'll find a lot of the species that we have here in Africa do occur elsewhere in the world and it's just nice for you guys to be able to relate to something we may see here with some birds that you may have back home. Okay, 
Okay. 20 minutes left, folks. Let's keep the wind in our faces and see what we can find. I'm not sure what bird this is from. It could be a vulture. It could well be a vulture. So that is what I would like to guess, but I'm not 100% sure. Now, our next task is to find somewhere to put them so that they can guide us in the right direction. See how that does for now. Not that we needed a lucky charm, but I thought it would be a nice addition to Zanella. She's a lady and she does need pampering, and she does like decorating herself, so this is a small start in the right direction. Gloria Hawkins on Twitter. Good morning and welcome. Gloria has just asked whether cheetah are common in the Sabi sands? The answer to that is no, Gloria. They are not common. And not now, it's important to emphasize. Not at the moment. There are certain times that I've heard of, certain eras where cheetah were more prominent in the Sabi sands. 10, 15 years ago, there were a bit more cheetah sightings. But it does ebb and flow, the number of cheetah that are seen in this area. The fundamental problem that cheetah face in this area, though, is initially habitats as you can see a lot of the areas are thick so any animal requiring open vegetation to thrive is going to battle so that would be the ostrich and the warthog is two examples and now the cheetah all animals that prefer and do better in open areas um having said that though there have been a few cheetah moving through the area over the last few months um but it's, it's very uncommon to see them here. In three and a half years that I spent in the Saabi Sands, not exactly here, further south from here, but similar vegetation, on average, in a six-week working cycle, you would see cheetah once or twice at the most as an average statistic. So relative to the amount of times you're seeing lion and leopard, cheetah are highly uncommon here which is a pity um, because it would be wonderful to follow the fastest mammal on, on earth doing its business more often than not but like I say we are really so spoiled already uh, in terms of the big five not that that's important but the animals do include the lion, leopard, elephant, buffalo and rhino so those animals are quite prominent here and we do enjoy really good sightings of those animals and out of all of those animals the leopard especially is the one that stands out from the rest because the leopard is a very shy and elusive animal typically and there's lots of places in Africa where leopards occur but they are not seen here on the other hand they occur and we get to see them which obviously helps a lot because without seeing them we don't get to share their beauty and understand how beautiful and, and amazing they are um, so there are a lot of benefits of this reserve and of this area relative to lots of other wilderness areas that I have spent time in over the years um, sadly cheetah and water and ostrich 